So Lunar Vice is a payload of instruments that includes cameras that are gonna go on a lander and a suite of instruments that are gonna go on a rover that are gonna land on the surface of the moon. So we're gonna physically put these instruments on the top of a volcanic feature on the moon to study the types of rocks that are on that feature as well as the regolith that's coding that feature. And that will give us an idea of how that feature formed and evolved over time. So we're doing imaging, we're doing spectroscopy, and we're landing on a volcanic dome. So that's where we get, and we're exploring the surface. So that's where we get all the components of Vice. So the Grutheisen domes are these really unique volcanic features on the moon that are really enriched in the element silica. Now on Earth, when we see similar types of volcanoes, we see them where we have uh, plate tectonics of water interacting with one another. So think of like Mount St. Helens. And so that's the type of volcanic feature that has highly silicic magmas on Earth. But on the moon, we don't have plate tectonics and we also don't have an abundance of water. So how we get such silica rich magmas on the moon is not understood. And that's why we're going to the Grutheisen domes with our instrument suite, because Lunar Vice is gonna figure out how those features formed. Uh, they have very steep slopes and they have very flat surfaces, which makes it really perfect for landing uh, on top of. Yeah, it sounds scary to say we're landing <laughs> on top of a volcanic dome and all of the lander providers, I'm sure, were freaking out a little bit when we said that. No. Um, but it's a relatively flat top of the surface, so we think there's a, really, a bunch of really interesting landing sites um, on there that would be really safe to land on. On the rover, we're going to have two multispectral cameras. So we'll have one camera that looks at the same wavelengths that our eyes are sensitive to. Uh, and then we'll also have a camera that is sensitive to temperature. And so using these two cameras that are pointed in the same location, we'll be able to build up panoramic images of the surrounding and use those to determine composition and what type of rocks they are. And also the physical properties of the rocks. Are they really porous? Are they really dense? And then we'll also be using a gamma ray and neutron spectrometer also on the rover and that will give us the elemental abundance. So again, getting at the composition of uh, the rocks of the surface. And then I'll let Addy talk about the instruments on the lander. Yes, yeah, so on the lander, we have two cameras. So these are visible cameras. Again, cameras we see things with our eyes. Um, but these are looking at the landing. So we have a descent camera that's gonna be imaging the surface as we land, both imaging what our landing site looks like, but then also as we get very close to the surface, we expect there to be dust blown up from the landing features, um, from the landing um, engines. And so uh, that will blow up dust and we'll be able to image that at a pretty high frame rate. Um, and then we also have a context camera that's gonna be taking an image of the landing site throughout the mission. So it'll be able to image any um, changes that we see, but also where the rover is going to drive so we can help with path planning and things like that. You know, when you work on any mission, I think the most exciting thing is always to see the first images from a new place. And so I think what really excites me is the idea of once we land at the surface and getting observations or images from our cameras from the surface of a volcanic feature on a planetary body. That's really crazy to think about that we're going to do that. And that's what really excites and drives me. So with every, with all of the research we do, one of the, and the fact that we're here at UCF, right? One of the most important parts for us is also involving students in the projects. Um, so we have graduate students who are sort of um, involved in analyzing data and will be helping us calibrate cameras and things like that and working with the companies we're working with. Um, and we have a large number of undergraduate students that we're going to be able to involve on the project. Um, and we're also hoping to be able to involve local K through 12 teachers and do some teacher and residents where they'll get to come in and learn about the mission and then take that back to their classrooms. So we're really excited about all those opportunities to sort of be building up the next generation of lunar scientists as we're doing this mission.